So this is the densities lab of liquids and solids. It, it comes in two parts, and I'll show you the, uh, the uh, two parts uh, after I talk about the theory behind it. And so uh, the theory behind this is Archimedes' principle. And Archimedes' principle says a body immersed in a liquid fluid, or liquid here, loses weight equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. So uh, bodies that float displace as much of the liquid as they need to uh, because their, their density is less than that of water, and then they float. So for instance, if something uh, floats halfway out of the water, like the 2 by 4 that you would have, uh, could have done this with uh, if they had a big enough pail, uh, that 2 by 4, if you put it in, in, the, uh, in a bucket of water, it would float halfway out of the water because you may remember its density was about 500 kilograms per cubic meter, and the density of water is 1,000, roughly 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. In terms of the, that density, we've got to be a little more specific in this lab. So, um, so if it's 500 out of 1,000, it's going to float 500 thousandths, or one half in water and out of water. It's going to displace the water until it displaces water equal to its weight, and then it's going to stop displacing water. So Archimedes found this. And of course, this is a true story, uh, be because one day he was playing in this bathtub, and he had his, uh, it wasn't a rubber ducky, because they didn't have rubber back then, it was a wooden ducky. And he was playing with this wooden ducky, and he pushed it underwater, and you notice when he pushed it underwater, it pushed back. So he thought, and of course he didn't think in Newtonian terms about forces, but he thought, well, it's pushing back up. And so, uh, the reason he was in the bathtub because he was frustrated because the king of Sparta had asked him to uh, figure out if the crown that he had just paid big bucks for was solid gold or not. But he was not allowed to destroy it. I know engineers like destructive testing. It's kind of fun. But no, the king said, don't you scratch this thing even. So he was puzzled and he was soaking in his bathtub thinking about this and playing with his wooden ducky. And he, he just realized that the ducky pushed up when it was submerged in water, and that there was a, we would call it now a force, or push on that. And so he just got all excited because it occurred to him that if you put the crown under water and it's made out of gold, gold has a density of 25, 20 times that of water, roughly 19.3, I think. and. Uh, uh, it's going to lose uh, one nineteen point three th of its weight in water because that's how much that amount, that volume of water weighs. That's Archimedes' principle. Uh, and if you put something uh, like a piece of metal that's got a density of ten in the water, it loses one tenth of its weight. It has a buoyant force of one tenth of its weight, and so it's only going to weigh nine tenths as much in the water than, than it does in air because air has a, comparatively negligible buoyant force. Oh, don't tell that to a hot air balloon person. Um, but here it does. So uh, Archimedes got so excited, he jumped out of his bath bathtub, and he ran down to the king's uh, castle, which wasn't too far away, palace, I should say. And uh, uh, of course, he didn't bother to put any clothes on, uh, but that's OK, because back in the old days in Greece, uh, Marathon runners ran around like that all the time, apparently. So anyway, so he went down. And why he shouted this, I don't know. But he shouted, Eureka. Uh, and that's to me, is the name of a vacuum cleaner. But in, uh, in Greek, it means, I found it. I got it. And so we name this after his honorary run to the castle. Uh, with that answer. If you believe that, I have a nice bridge for sale in Brooklyn. So that's a good story. So uh, of course, with, with, uh, with liquids, uh, we can't talk about mass and volume. I mean, uh, how many times have you talked about a kilogram of liquid? What? Uh, you've talked about a volume of like a, a liter, a gallon, a quart, or whatever, have you. So we, uh, we talk about uh, volumes of liquids, 
not masses of liquids, of course, but a volume of liquid has mass. And uh, the interesting relationship, which I think you saw in chapter one, way back in chapter one, uh, has to do with density, which is, you use the symbol rho for. And the density, this is called the mass density, is defined by the mass of a material divided by its volume. That's the mass density. So uh, if you want to know the mass of something, a uh, mass of a certain liquid, you can multiply its density times its volume and get the, the mass of the liquid, uh, which is what we're going to do. Okay. So we also know uh, that the force of gravity is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And I can replace that for liquids by, uh, replace mass by uh, density times volume times I'm writing this as kind of a big fancy script V so you don't get the idea it's velocity or something. So the force of gravity, uh, weight of a liquid, is more conveniently given by uh, its density times its volume times, of course, the acceleration due to gravity. This experiment would not work in outer space because G is zero. Okay, so... Um, what, what uh, was discovered then, let me use the notation that I did in the handout, uh, that is, uh, if you call the mass of something in air uh, m, and you call the mass of something submerged in a liquid m prime, then what happens when you put a, a, ma a, a mass of some solid object in a liquid that loses weight equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. In other words, it has a buoyant force we like to talk in Newtonian terms equal to uh, the mass of the liquid times g. And when the mass of the liquid times g uh, is equal to its uh, uh, is greater than its weight uh, then it sinks. And if it's less than its weight, like the block, the, the block of wood floating in water, then it floats. And it floats, as we talked about, halfway down because its density is half that of water. So here's the, I'm just going to leave this L off. And uh, so that means that the mass, the weight uh, of an object in a liquid, mass times acceleration due to gravity, is equal to the weight of the object in air, mass times g, minus this buoyant force. So that's Archimedes' principle. We're going to use that to uh, measure the densities of uh, various materials. Uh, we're going to need to know the densities of the liquids that we immerse them in. And we'll show you that in a minute. That's, that uses a hydrometer. A hydrometer is an uh, instrument that works by Archimedes' principle. And it's calibrated so that when you dunk this hydrometer in, in, uh, in a liquid, it floats at a certain level. And there's a scale which tells you what the density of that liquid is. So that's very nice. So we'll see those in just a bit. So we'll use the hydrometer to measure the density of the liquid. We can call that rho sub L. So Archimedes found that the buoyant force, uh, when you immerse something in a liquid, and it normally would, uh, well, uh, like a piece of rubber ducky or wooden ducky, would push back and it would, it would its buoyant force would be greater than its mass, so it would look like it has a negative mass or something like that. Flubber, I guess. So uh, if we look at Archimedes' principle here, um, mass loses weight in a liquid equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. And the weight of the liquid displaced is the density of the liquid times the uh, acceleration, times, times the volume uh, of the liquid. OK. so. So we can write, rewrite this expression as m prime times g equals m times g minus the density of the liquid times v 
times g. This is the mass of the liquid displaced. And conveniently, g cancels out. So when we find the mass of something, which we usually talk about uh, uh, with a balance, uh, the mass of the liquid mass of the something in liquid displaced is equal to its mass minus the mass of the liquid displaced, which is the volume of the liquid times, times its density. So this is our formula uh, for the first part of the lab, where we're just going to dunk different things into the liquid, uh, uh, most of which sink and one of which floats, and find out their density. That latter part is a little bit tricky. Okay, if we replace this volume of the material, uh, the, the object that we're, that we're sinking in the, in the liquid, if we replaced V by uh, the mass of the object divided by its density, that's just using Archimedes' principle and the definition of density. Density is mass divided by volume. A volume is um, mass divided by density. So that's what we're going to do over there. So we have m prime equals m minus rho of the liquid times m over uh, the mass of uh, the liquid. OK. Uh, no, no, this is not the mass of the liquid. This is the mass, I'm sorry. This is the density of the object itself. So it's the density of the object. That we're going to immerse. Fix that. Okay, so uh, so we have this nice formula here. M prime is m minus uh, m times rho sub l over rho, and we can work it around uh, to find the density of the object immersed. You can solve for rho downstairs, multiply through by rho, and gather terms, and you end up with an expression that looks like this, uh, m over m minus m prime times the density of the liquid. So you can get the density of an object that, that uh, sinks in a liquid by uh, this ratio uh, of the mass in air divided by the mass uh, that you measure uh, in the liquid, uh, my, the mass minus the mass you measure in the liquid. Again, if you have something with a density of 2, then this is going to be, uh, uh, gonna be uh, a 2. That is, uh, it's, yeah. So this is our formula for the first part of the lab in which we sink a piece of uh, a copper or brass, a uh, piece of aluminum, and also a piece of lead, a small chunk of lead, uh, a little slab of lead, that we're going to measure the densities of. So we want to get the densities of aluminum, uh, brass, which is mostly copper, and lead. That's your first quest using that formula to get the density of these three materials immersed in different liquids. We're going to use two different liquids. We're going to use water and ethanol. This is not drinking ethanol. It's denatured ethanol, ethanol so don't get any ideas. Uh, so we'll use two different liquids, water and methanol, uh, ethanol, sorry, uh, and uh, find the density of these materials. And of course, that, uh, they ought to be the same. It's uh, Copper is copper, lead is lead, and aluminum is aluminum. So it doesn't matter whether they're dunked in water or ethanol, uh, they should give you the same density. So that's a quick way to double check your accuracy of your calculations and the accuracy of your measurements. This lab has three parts. The first part is to find the density of three different liquids. We're going to use water, uh, dis distilled water. Uh, of course, the density should be uh, one gram per cubic centimeter or 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Our hydrometers are and labeled in grams per cubic centimeter. So it'd be one. So the density of water is one. That's very convenient. Uh, we have something called uh, relative density or specific gravity that's compared to water. So if something's 
uh, three times as dense as water that has a specific gravity of three because I'm dividing by one, one gram per cubic centimeter. So that is a density of three grams per cubic centimeter. Just a convenient way to not worry about uh, what you're dunking it into. So uh, in the second part, we'll measure the density of these three different materials, two cylinders and a slab of, a, of, a, of lead. And then we're gonna use a slab of lead to tie to a piece of wood because we're going to measure the density of the wood, but as you know, wood floats. So we have to, we have to sink it with a little slab of lead. And you want to tie the, this is the hardest part of this experiment, is to tie this uh, lead and put it on the bottom, please, and tie it with a string and then have a loop up here so we can dunk it in and it will sink because, again, Archimedes' principle says a body immersed in a liquid is equal to the weight, uh, uh, equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. And of course, you have to immerse it. Then it can't float because anything that floats on water is apparently massless because we have a buoyant force going up and a gravity, gravitational force going down, and they're equal but opposite, and so it just sits there and floats. So this third part of the experiment is a little tricky. You've got to tie this up, put the lead on the bottom, and then immerse it in liquid. We're only going to use the ethanol and the water here, although we're going to ask you to measure the density just for uh, a, different, a different liquid material, the density of, of uh, ethylene glycol, which is antifreeze. So we're going to immerse this and do some uh, rather more complicated calculations, and I'll, I'll leave, uh, I won't show you that. Uh, it's on page two of your handout. It's equation six. You're going to get the density of the uh, wood after you subtract the buoyant force, the, the buoyant effect of, of the wood, and also the buoyant effect of the lead. There's a little buoyant effect. Lead has a density of about uh, 11. Uh, grams per cubic centimeter. And so, uh, as you'll find out when you do part A. Uh, and so there's a buoyant force for the lead, there's a buoyant force for the wood. That makes it a little bit more complicated. You have to apply uh, the uh, equation several times. I'll write down the equation just to show you. This is the density of something that normally floats in the liquid. You immerse it in. This is the mass, uh, we'll call it mass one, times the density of the liquid divided by mass one minus mass one prime. Mass one prime uh, is the density, is the mass of the object that's being sunk uh, in air, uh, in air in, in, in the liquid. So you need to mass this. This is the mass of the wood in air. You need to find that out before you do this experiment. Uh, plus the mass of the two added together, the mass of the wood and the mass of the lead, I'll call it M sub 2 for the two things together, uh, that you can mass together, be smart to do that, or add mass separately and add the two masses together, whichever you prefer. The former process is a little more accurate because it only involves one massing. Uh, and this is the formula for the third part. Okay, well, let's look at the equipment and see how we do this. This is hydrometer, and uh, it's, uh, it, this hydrometer is this hydrometer, which measures uh, liquids with densities from 900 to 1,000, or 0.9 to 1.0 uh, grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, we have a series of uh, hydrometers that can measure from 0.7 to 1.2 kilogram or grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, these are, of course, in kilograms per cubic meter, which is our standard SI unit. Uh, so uh, since I know this is water, and I know water has a density of about one, and that's another interesting story. It has a density of one at four degrees, and its density goes down 
as you heat the water up, which makes sense, but water is very unique because its density goes down between four degrees and zero degrees when it freezes. So this, this hydrometer is a little bit different because the lowest number is on top and the highest number is on the bottom because, of course, the, the, the deeper it floats, the, the more dense uh, the object is. So you want to uh, be careful. These are glass, and they have a lead uh, weight on the bottom. So uh, if you just kind of drop it in and uh, let it go, it could go crashing to the bottom and break the uh, hydrometer. So be very careful when you put these in and put them in. Uh, and don't let go of them till you feel like they're going to float. Okay, it feels to me like it's pushing up. So, oops, I'm going to let go of that. And uh, yes, indeed, it floats. So, so it's going to float at a density somewhat less than one because this is at room temperature, uh, which is way above four degrees Celsius. And so, uh, if you look at the scale here. Uh, I think we'll, we'll show you a close-up of this in just a, just a bit. If you read the scale, you have, um, looks to me uh, like a density of 9, 0.99, uh, and I'm going to read it as 7, so 0.997. You, can, you, have, you have a meniscus issue here. I'm looking at the top of the meniscus which is right about at seven. And uh, yeah, you can push it to one more significant figure if you didn't have such a meniscus problem. And some liquids have more of a problem than others. Uh, but I'm going to call that 997. And you can look this up in the book, or you can Google it, or whatever you want to do, and find out what the density of water is at the temperature uh, today in this room, which you probably ought to take at some point in this lab just to be able to do that comparison. So 0.997 is just about right for the density of water at room temperature, which is about 0 0.20 or 20, 22 uh, Celsius degrees. Okay, that's that's how you use a hydrometer. You start uh, you start with the hydrometer that floats the easiest. If you don't know what the density of something is, start with the 700 to 800 hydrometer. If that floats way out of the out of the liquid, then you go to the next one. And you go to the next one until you you get one that floats on the scale that it has. So you don't if you start out with the heaviest hydrometer, it's going to go crashing to, to, down to the bottom and possibly damage it or break it. So please be careful with the hydrometers and dry them off if you would before you put them back in the case if you're the last person to use them in the lab. So thank you. Okay, so these are the three or four things you're going to find the mass of. A piece of copper, uh, the, the floating wood or wooden ducky substitute, and a piece of lead that you tie underneath the wood to make it float uh, without running off to the side. So, and the beaker we're going to use is a 500 milliliter beaker. Now the question is, uh, this is the mass of the aluminum cylinder, which is uh, 57.3 uh, three. I'm stretching it. The last three is pretty iffy. So if you just want to read it to the nearest uh, mark on that scale, you'll get it to the nearest hundredth of a gram, which is probably close enough. But, okay, 57.323, if you want to get all, everything you can out of this balance. So, and it's balanced, uh, but don't forget to check the balance. You can adjust the balance by turning the screw just a little bit one way or the other and making sure it's zero before you put anything on the balance. So, uh, we will not do these others. And uh, we want to weigh this. This is the tricky part. But there's a sneaky way to do this. We want to weigh this aluminum when it's in the water, but we don't want to weigh the water. Who cares how much water it's in? It could be in a bucket, could be in a beaker, could be in the ocean. Well, no, that's got a different density because it's salt water. But uh, it could be in a lake, and therefore it, it makes no difference how much water it's in, so you don't want to weigh this. So we have to figure out how to do that. 
And the easy way to do that is as follows. There's this little platform here, which you can raise up with some effort. Okay, and this course, this is part of the balance, so you can't just leave it off. Uh, this has got to be back, put back on. And we've got a little wedge on these to help you make this beaker uh, completely vertical or pretty close to vertical. So it, it went, on, went on the beaker's sides or to rub on the sides of those. Uh, so we put this on the hook here so it's suspended. And just for one thing, of course, it weighs this. It has the same mass, whether it's in the pan or hanging from the pan, because you're weighing the pan and the mass. Uh, so it's still balanced. And so we, we uh, put this in. And make sure that it's uh, sitting in there so that it's not rubbing on the sides. And then we find the mass. We find M prime. That's the mass of the object in the liquid, uh, which includes the buoyant force. So we just, uh, I'm going to try a number around 40, maybe a number around upper 30s, because I know roughly what the density of aluminum is. Ah, there we go. So uh, let me just bounce it uh, quickly. You need to do it carefully. Don't forget static friction is greater than kinetic friction, so actually it's nice to have it bouncing up and down a little bit until it reaches its balance point. So it's uh, 36.158, 36.16, whichever. 36.158 grams, and uh, since I know the density of aluminum, which is about three, I won't give you the, the actual accurate value, you have to look that up, uh, it's in the book, um, then it's going to lose, yes, you guessed it, one-third of its weight in water, uh, because it has a density of three, and so the, the aluminum uh, volume, of that volume of aluminum, has a has a weight a mass that's three times the same amount of water. Archimedes principle, very simple and very useful. So that's it. And when you do the calculations here, you'll find out what fraction of weight it, it has lost using that equation we talked about at first. And uh, you'll come out a little under three grams per cubic centimeter for aluminum. That's how it works.